Today on Everyday Ordinary, we talk Spain. Are you preparing to travel to Spain in 2023? Well, here are 12 things you need to know before traveling to Spain that can help your trip run as smoothly as possible. In this video, I'll reference the mainland like Madrid, as well as Spanish islands such as Ibiza and the Gran Canaria, a part of the Canary Islands. Let's get started. Number 12, it is important that you check with the Spanish embassy to make sure that they have no vaccination, no COVID requirements before you travel so that you can be prepared when you visit. Number 11, the airport. The main international airport in Madrid is massive. And if you're planning to travel from Madrid to another country while you're there, get there at least two to three hours early. After getting through security, it took me nearly 25 to 30 minutes just to get to my gate after doing speed walking. I think I might have passed anywhere between two to three duty-free stores that were massive, just to give you an idea how large it was. When flying out of Spain's airport, they will only show you your departure gate 30 minutes prior to boarding and not before then. And then boarding of the plane starts 45 minutes before the scheduled takeoff. Number 10, maps. It's important to try to find yourself a app that has downloaded maps on it that you can preload onto your before you go because this will allow you not to have to use your data and then unfortunately get back home to high roaming fees because you was using your data throughout the time it's an easy way to get through it number nine transportation if you're considering running a car manual transmission is a very big thing in the three cities that i mentioned so if you do rent a car it's a chance that you might have five speed. So if you know how to ride five speed, that might be a good option for you. While in Grand Canaria, I realized that you can probably pick up a, a rental car for about 45 euros just for the day for a compact size, just to get around. Something to definitely consider. Taxis in Ibiza. When, it, when you hail a taxi on your own while like walking along in the street, you just see one you want them to pick you up, they're gonna start the meter at three euros and 75. If you call it to your location, the meter automatically starts at five euros and 30. And if you're calling and you're going to the airport, it's an additional one euro and 85. I stayed at Hotel Torre Del Mar in Ibiza, right outside of Ibiza town. And from there to the airport, it was 14 euros and 95. Number seven, breakfast. If breakfast is a thing that you typically like to do every morning, then I would highly consider you checking in to see if wherever you're staying, if you're staying in a hotel and they offer breakfast to actually get it there. It just makes things a lot easier than trying to have to leave out and trying to find breakfast elsewhere. Number six, the VAT tax. The VAT tax is, is basically an opportunity for all the shoppers to really make out well. Basically, when you get out there and you're out there shopping, if the store supports it, they will write you a receipt and you have the opportunity to get the taxes that you spent returned to you when you fly back home for, for your trip. And you have to go to a sp specific counter where they're going to give you your return for all the spending. So you have to make sure you keep all of your receipts. Now, there are places there in the city, in some of the cities where you can get your return before going to the airport. So I would definitely look into those type of places. Number five, Uber versus the cab. In Madrid, Uber is an excellent choice to travel to get to wherever you want to get to, especially if you're not fluent in Spanish because you can just type in your destination and it'll take you right there. You don't have to worry about a lot of other things. Now, as far as the two islands are concerned, Uber is not there, but they do communicate extremely well. So that shouldn't be a big issue with you getting to wherever you're trying to go. Number four, money. 
Using a credit card versus exchanging currency is an ideal way to go. Credit cards are widely accepted in almost every store I've visited. And when it's time to exchange money, the premium that the U.S. will charge or that Spain will charge to transfer your currency to theirs is really up there. So just to give you an example, back in September when I was there in 2022, the, I, I exchanged, what was it, 61 euros and the lady at the airport gave me back 50 US dollars. And at this particular moment, the dollar and the euro will equal one to one. Number three, party time. Look, guys, in Spain, they party. I and mean, this is all, all parts. They party, they have a good time. And the party starts around 10 or 11 at night. And it goes until like five in the morning. And this is almost any day of the week. So if you're used to that type of partying time and all that stuff, then you you straight. But if you're not interested, if you're not used to that, you might want to take a nap because especially if you just traveled there, that, that jet lag will catch you. Number two, lifestyle. On Spanish islands and near pools, like in Ibiza and Gran Canaria, it is common to see women topless and children walking along the beach without clothing on. So don't be surprised if you see that the way they look at things like that is very different than a lot of other places in the world. I also believe there are new beaches on those two islands, but I was not able to see in those while I was visiting. Number one, time. They use the 24 hour clock versus in the US, we use the 12 hour clock. Now, it may not seem like a big deal, but when you're looking at the time, sometimes you just sit there and try to compute it. So just make sure, like if you wear a wristwatch or whatever, make sure you make those adjustments so that, you know, you won't get off track. Thank you for listening. I hopefully this information was a big help and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video.